how do you run a faster 5K? Has Mika ever dealt with anemia? We are gonna go through my running shoe rotation. All right, everybody, today we are doing a Q&A. We are going to talk all things running and training. A couple days ago, we asked for some submissions on Instagram for questions that you guys have. So we're gonna go over the common questions. Let me give you guys a quick update on where we've been. For the last time you saw me was three weeks ago, just finished up a 5K, first 5K on the track in two years. You know, it didn't go that well. I'm gonna have like nightmares about that for the horse. But I complained about it on last week's video. So if you wanna see me complain, Go check that out. Last three weeks, I've been training really hard. I've stepped up my mileage and I stepped up my workouts and you know, just kind of been focusing more on getting back into shape. It's kind of like in movies, TV shows, anime, whatever, that the main character, they get their butt kicked. Then they go through like a little training arc, training montage, and then they come out of that even better and stronger. That's where I'm at right now. I'm in the middle of my training arc, just getting better every single day. So we're just gonna go bang out some questions right away. How do you run a faster 5K? A lot of people think that to run a faster 5K, uh, you gotta run 5K pace all the time. Nope, you need to be running above, below, and at 5K pace, all in harmony, in a beautiful kind of way. How do you go and structure that throughout the week? You just want a good mix of everything. You don't always wanna be running faster. Big thing for me, my 5K time got faster when I increased my mileage. And that's not necessarily because of the mileage itself, but it just made it so I was able to handle harder workouts and workouts with more volume. And if you just can't go up in mileage, you can always cross train, add in a little cross training to build that aerobic base because the aerobic base is key. Okay, moving along here, we are gonna go through my running shoe rotation because a lot of people have asked that. Um, I'll be right back and we get my shoes. We're gonna keep this super quick because I got a lot of shoes. So starting off with daily trainers. In my current running shoe rotation, I got three shoes right now. You know, we'll start off with the New Balance Super Comp trainers. I really like these. They're soft, they're nice. I usually use them for long runs. Um, they're like really soft though. You know, if you like that, that's great. Next thing that I got going on is the Cloud Monsters. Um, this is honestly the only on shoe I've tried so far, but I love this shoe. This is like, definitely in my top three shoes of all time. So it's always staying in my rotation. Last trainer that is in my rotation, it's my first time trying this shoe. It is the uh, Nike Invincible maybe three. This shoe is nice, it's soft. Um, I don't like wearing it all the time though, to be honest. When your legs have a little bit of pop in them, this shoe's great. When your legs are tired, this shoe kind of feels like a little too soft. All right, now for fast shoes. You know, obviously every once in a while I'm racing the Vapor Flies. Cloud Boom Echo 3, these are great, I like them. These two are like, there's less to them, so they're not as soft, not as squishy. So I don't normally wear them in longer stuff just because they protect my legs a little bit. Nike Alpha Fly 1s, Nike Alpha Fly 2s, not my favorite. Haven't tried the 3s yet but the ones are really nice, super soft. The Saucony Endorphin Elites. These are pretty good, I like them. They're soft, they're squishy, great, great shoe. Before I end this whole shoe rant, if you are wanting to figure out what shoe works best for you, I mean, you can go off my recommendations, but I would recommend to go to like a running specialty shoe store, have them do a little gait analysis thing and recommend shoes based on how you walk and run and stuff like that. They'll be able to point you in the right direction way more than I ever could. I received a lot of questions on nutrition, diet, what I eat, how to go about structuring, all that good stuff. To remember, I'm not a nutritionist, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. You know, it all depends on what your goals are. Obviously, if you're in high school and you're in college, trying to perform good and do it in a sustainable way. You know, you gotta eat, get enough calories. I don't believe in restricting food, so it's like if I'm hungry and it's there, I'm gonna eat it. Obviously, you wanna try and eat as healthy as you can, but by eat as best you can, obviously, like, you wanna make sure you're getting a variety of different types of foods in, lots of color. The only macro that I'm, like, really tracking is, like, protein, making sure I'm getting at least 100 grams of protein a day. You know, I'm not tracking it down to the molecule, but I'm, you know, I'm trying my best, so. Okay, everybody, let's welcome Mika Wood back to the vlog. She's usually behind the camera. Rarely does she come in front of the camera, except on her own YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome. Uh, do you have anything to say to these people? You can take this. That's awkward. <laughs> what the you can cut it out. Hi, guys. Excited to be back. <laughs> do you have anything to say to these people? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> As many of you know, Mika and I, we share an Instagram channel. So a lot of the questions had to do with either both of us or her. So I'm bringing her on so she can kind of help tag team some of these questions. First question is, how did y'all meet? When did you first meet? Basically, we met in high school. I was a year younger, so I started running a little bit later. He was also a runner and I kind of saw him, but I was a little bit slower, so he didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was. But yeah, then I started to get a little bit quicker and he started noticing me. He had the speed goggles <laughs> for me um, and hit me up, so. I mean, I just noticed her when I noticed her, which was my senior year, which was when she happened to be the best on the team. Yeah, we started dating my senior year. That was it. She went to Utah State. 
I went to BYU, so two separate schools. Yeah, we just dated through college and it was great. And then as soon as I graduated, I got married. We got married. Sorry, we got married, <laughs> so. Next question is, what were your high school times? What did you run as a high school freshman? So for me, freshman year in the mile, I ran 452. In the two mile, it was probably like 11 minutes. I can't remember, didn't run the 800. Sophomore year, I went from 452 in the mile to 426, 953, and then like two flat, okay? Junior year, 423 in the mile, 913 in the two mile, and then 158 in the 800. And then my senior year, 417 in the mile, 913 in the two mile, 156 in the 800. Um, honestly, I kind of blinked out all of my high school time, so I don't really remember like year to year. I feel like we both progressed pretty well throughout high school. Okay, uh, next question that kind of goes along with this one is what was our mileage in high school? I don't remember my different mileage from year to year, but what I do remember is that I basically peaked at 40 to 45 miles per week. Uh, but yeah, coach wouldn't let me get much higher than 40-ish miles per week. Yeah, same. I think one week I ran 50, but that was only one week my whole high school career. Wait, most... you ran 45 too? I ran 50 one year. It was the year you graduated. So it was my senior year and 50 Dang. miles for one week. That's actually crazy because that's way higher mileage Yeah, he, he let us like go higher at the my senior year. Next question is for Mika specifically. How is the Peru running process going? Is it different than here in the US? So right now I'm currently working on like switching over my allegiance from World Athletics from the US to Peru. I traveled to Peru like a few weeks ago just to get that process started and do all the paperwork for that. I don't know how to explain it, but the world rankings is like, Basically, in the US, we have the Olympic trials, and if you are top three and have the standard, you get to go. In Peru, it's not like that. You can take top three at the national meet. Even if you do have the standard, there's still a possibility that you don't get selected. That possibility is low, but Peru also honors world rankings as well. So even if you don't have the standard, but your world ranking is high enough in a specific event, they still get to select you if they want to. So. But yeah, my main goal is just to compete at the national championship and hopefully do well there and just kind of get my name out there in Peru because not a lot of people know who I am and yeah. Are you guys currently self-coached or do you have coaches? For me, I currently have a coach. His name is Rory Linkletter. He's in Flagstaff. We were teammates at BYU. He actually just ran the Olympic standard in the marathon, 208.10, so shout out to him. He also has a YouTube channel. And then Adam coaches me. I think it's really important to have a coach because being self-coached is way too hard. You have to make really tough decisions. And I honestly don't like to think about any of those decisions. I just like to do what my coach tells me. Obviously, you know, work with them and cooperate like what you want to do, but it is nice having a coach, so. Is Mika's diet the same as Adam's? Personally, I eat a lot, but Adam, next level. He always has like second dinners, second lunches. I should do a what I eat in a day though. That'd yeah. be fun. Coming soon. What training did you focus on to take your time down to sub 16 minutes in the 5K? In college, I tried to break 16 minutes so many times and it was always really hard. Um, 5Ks never came easy to me. And I think what really helped me this time around was really focusing on 5K specific work. So yeah, Adam wrote me some workouts that kind of helped my confidence and helped me be able to feel like I could run that pace for three miles straight. I feel like I'm pretty good at the strength, but it would just needed to be more intense 5K specific workouts. Has Mika ever dealt with anemia? If she has, how does she maintain good iron levels? Anemia is like a huge thing I've struggled with in the past. I think my iron was at a 10, so not ideal. Normally you wanna be above 30 to like somewhat feel good. When above you run. 30 at least. Yeah. For runners, it's like probably higher than that. Yeah, honestly, anything they over like 50, 50. Yeah, yeah, anything over 50, you're solid. But yeah, a 10 wasn't ideal. So I just took the like prescribed pills that my doctor in college gave me, um, but those didn't work. For me, I'm not able to absorb it as well. I got iron infusion and I would get them like once or twice a year and that would really help me. Now okay. I don't have the luxury of so getting broke. iron infusions. We're broke. Yeah, we're broke. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking liquid iron. Do you guys plan on having kids? The answer is yes, we are going to get Project uh, Kipchoge started <laughs> young. I mean, he's gonna be running every day. Um, he's joking. <laughs> All right, so if you guys are ever wondering why sometimes I don't come out with videos as much, it's for what exactly what happened this morning. We had a workout today, three by two mile. I was gonna get some footage, answer some questions along the way, but I spent 30 minutes looking for my watch. And now I'm in a rush 
and hopefully I can get the workout in today. So we're just gonna answer one question. And that question is, how do you deal with bad workouts slash races? You know, we'll see how this workout goes. I'm gonna give you two answers. I'm gonna give you the ideal answer and then I'm gonna give you like the more realistic one. The ideal answer is first, you gotta get rid of the thought of having a bad race or workout. Um, there's no such thing as a bad workout. You're out there every day trying to get better. How can you have a bad workout? It just doesn't make sense. Okay, anyway, so that is the uh, ideal answer, but that just doesn't work in the real world because you get disappointed. Best advice for that is to kind of, you just gotta get over it as quickly as you can. You know, we've all heard about the 24 hour rule, memory like a goldfish, where you take what you can learn and then you move on quickly. And I think this is very valid because if you sit and you ruminate and you're just thinking about a bad experience in a bad race, um, that's only gonna hurt your self-confidence. That's only gonna hurt the vision of yourself. And you don't wanna identify with a bad race. You know, you're, you are not your worst race, if that makes sense. Okay, how tall are you? Okay, actually, I'm really glad that we can clear this up because people in my comments the other day were saying I'm the same size as Mance, Connor Mance. And if you guys have ever seen Connor Mance, you know that he's not the tallest dude on the planet. And I promise you, I'm taller than that guy. You know, I'm not gonna speculate at what Mance's height is at, but I'm 5'10". I'm like 5'10 and three quarters. Okay. We are on day four of making this video. That's just way too long and we got way too many questions. So I'm gonna do a rapid fire round of questions where I try and answer these questions as quickly and using as little words as possible, but also, you know, trying to be helpful because this Sorry, video, too, yeah, I know. How do you keep up with anxiety on races? Okay, so as many of you know, I'm an anxious guy. How do I keep up with anxiety on race days? I mean, you know, first of all, if you have anxiety, you should talk to someone because that's how I got started. But I, what I'm focusing on now is like flipping the script. Yeah, just flip the script, okay? Instead of asking what could go wrong, ask yourself what could go great. That's a really cheesy answer. I wish I could explain more, but this is rapid fire. So that next. was way too yappy. All right. Any advice for going into college running, specifically going up in mileage? Going up in mileage, go slowly. I only went up 10 miles per week a year. So 70, 80, 90, 100 by my senior year. Go slow, trust your body, that's it. Tips for high school runners. High school runners, keep things fun. And not just training, but keep racing fun because that's why we do what we do. Keep it fun, you'll always race good. How do I lock in and get into the zone while I'm in a race? I like to do the soft focus method. That's where, you know, I like tighten my focus as I get closer to race day. I'm really not thinking about the race at all until a few hours before the race. I don't do music, I don't do any of that stuff because it gets me too hyped. As runners who work full time, how do you beat feeling tired, fatigued at work and during workouts? Okay, so you cannot beat the fatigue. There's that saying, you know, if you're tired, just do it tired. And uh, that's gotta be your motto with these kind of things. How should you know how many miles you should run for weekly mileage? Okay, as I said before, you go up in mileage slowly. And then, you know, how you kind of know when to back off is, you know, when you get hurt, when you start not being able to recover from workouts as well, or you start not racing as good. How do you take caffeine before races to obtain the maximum benefits? I take coffee 90 minutes before my race. Usually before a race, I use espresso. I use a double shot of espresso. If it's just a normal workout, I'll have coffee, just normal coffee. What should I do if I feel like I'm ready for more mileage but my coach holds me back? Yeah, so if you feel like uh, you need more mileage but your coach is holding you back, just like the question asked. Oh my God. <laughs> Honestly, talk to your coach about it and if your coach Coach still says no you got to trust the process trust your coach's program trust your training because believing what you're doing is more important than the amount of mileage you're doing per week also you can maximize what you can do so if he lets you cross train or other things like that that's another avenue to getting more doing more um, how many races should one do in a year roughly and is it better to cluster them around each other in a season or to spread them out throughout the year? It depends what event you're racing. If you're doing marathons, obviously you want to space those out throughout the year. If you're doing shorter races, you can get away with doing those more often. Typically, I like to, before my big race, have at least one race before that, a few weeks before that, just kind of as a rust buster to get the race feeling back. Um, only thing I'd say is just make sure that you're taking some time off throughout the year to kind of reset your training cycles. What are your long-term goals with the sport? Yep, so long-term goals is just to keep doing this for as long as I find joy in it. Yeah, it's as simple as that. I mean, I wanna run as fast as I can and I want to have fun doing it, so. Okay guys, that is all the time I have left for questions. Unfortunately, there was a lot that we didn't get to. So if you have any questions, DM me. I try and get through all of them, you know. I'm not gonna make, you know, honestly, I'm not gonna promise anything, but if you have a question, DM me, 
And if I answer it, I answer it. If I don't, I'm sorry, but I really want to help you guys out. I have another video dropping next week, so keep an eye out for that. It's going to be all about recovery. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.